All right. I see we have 80 U active at the moment, so uh, I suppose I'll go. Well, now 10. I suppose I'll go ahead and get started. Got to do my intro, of course. So today on Crazy Performance Repair, we are going to go over a DOD lifter versus a standard lifter, and uh, I made this nice little cutout here because I finally got one apart. I was actually with a customer and we were going over the lifter. I was trying to explain it to him from what I do know. I accidentally dropped the DOD part of the lifter. When it hit the ground, it grenaded. It went all over the shop. So it was kind of cool that it just so happened to come apart while I was explaining things. And I've been wanting to get one of these apart for a while. Uh, I tried once and I wasn't able to do it very easily. So I'll go ahead and flip you guys around here and we'll go, go over the lifter quick. Here is your lifter display. Um, we have the DOD lifter up here, of course, and then the standard one down here. Now, the standard one, you know, it, it looks just like the DOD as far as it goes to the, the bottom half of it, except for a couple small changes. You can see this channel here, this cutaway, is a little bit wider on the non-DOD versus the DOD. It's just got this itty-bitty slot here. And then you look at oil holes, so you have the small oil hole there, but that gets fed by this entire channel on the non, versus the one that is, it's got this hole here, and it's also got a hole there. So you have two different oil feeds for this thing. Oop, focus, focus, there we go. So you have the hole there. That one is for feeding the hydraulic part of the DOD lifter. And this one is for the hydraulic part of the non-DOD lifter, which is obviously much larger. So this one is getting fed from the back well both of them are they're getting fed from the back and then this hole is facing the little oil tower that you guys are throwing the tools in to to release them and this hole here is what has these little paws inside of it some people are messaging me so if you guys get a little bleep that's just from messages so we have the spring that guy going into this and that's what lines up with this. Now there's a channel inside this lifter here. Oops, sorry about that. There's a channel inside this lifter here and it is uh, where this locking pin actually lines up with. So when this locking pin is collapsed, oil pressure is applied here, it collapses that pin set. And when that pin set collapses, it's allowed to move inside that, that lifter freely. So when these things fail, there's a shelf on here. And when that shelf is beat up, it's from not enough oil pressure to activate this, that it's half activated and it beats up on that shelf, creates a knurling effect, which shrinks down the inside of this hole. And then this piece gets stuck in this piece. So now this guy here, normally when you see them, they look like this with that spring compressed so you can kind of see how that assembly goes in there but what the part that I wasn't sure of is what's inside of these until now since I've got it apart and if you compare the two you can see it's got identical pieces so we have this spring and this spring do the same function this piece and this piece do the same function and then these two here are the same exact function where it gets different is the fact that it's obviously much smaller because it's like a miniature lifter and then the retaining clip. This one has this little guy that holds that piece in versus this lifter, which has this crazy spring-loaded, goofy contraption piece of crap as far as I'm concerned. And uh, these lifters are very, very similar. I mean, they're almost identical. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the oil flow section of it. So here's the DOD lifter. This little, this little tip that's sticking out here, it has a ball in it. It's a check valve. It only allows oil to flow into here. It doesn't let it out. So it creates a hydraulic, or no wait, no, it flows this way. So it flows into here, then it goes that direction and goes out, pushing up on this piece, lifting it out of that bore. And that is the little channel, oops, that is the little channel there that allows it to flow. So. That's how that little guy works, which is exactly like this larger version. You can see the tit sticking out there. 
but you can't see the ball because it's flowing through the side of this little cap versus the other one or it just flows straight out the end because it's so small they probably couldn't fit it in the same way but if you look right here you have the same style channel now the slight difference is this bump here and the channels well the only reason the bump is in this one is because it's just not tall enough for the dish for the push rod to go into so this guy it's dish it's it's nice and tall it's got a lot of room to work with so they didn't have to do that tit sticking out and then you can see this oil passage here is much much bigger than the oil passage oops sorry about that than the oil passage in this one and of course that oil passage also lines up with the lifter so this is the shell of where the oil passage lines up now you can see if you look at this lifter you have this long oil area for where this thing moves in inside and out of that piece and this one because that's actually technically the outside of those guts it's right here so that pretty much matches it's just a small version so it's basically a stock style lifter inside of a stock style lifter so it's, it's kind of goofy but it's just got that little set of actuating paws that makes it a, a little bit different now one thing i found out by taking this apart and measuring things that from the push rod area to the base circle of this roller here there is approximately a 400 thousandths difference in length between these two lifters and uh what that means is the reason you can't put this lifter in that hole is because the push rod length is too long to work with it so it leaves the lift the valves open if you put this one in there because this has a longer range than what that one does and uh it, it's a different base circle on the cam but i want to figure out exactly what the base circle is all right you guys i think that pretty much wraps it up so be sure to uh don't forget to hit that like button that uh, helps me and then all these comments of course they help too so so if you see anything i can improve on let me know if you want anything specific let me know uh any specific videos anything you're interested in what kind of videos you like all that stuff is very helpful to me so uh like share subscribe and uh well, i see another i see a comment there so like share subscribe and as always i hope to see you on the next video thanks for uh tuning in on the live stream of all things